Like a returning player on the first day of another season, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, we're back at it again. Ah, you smell that? Greatness, eat your heart out. Internet, my name is Perdium, and let's talk about my next 10 greatest returning players in Survivor. The previous video had a lot of honorable mentions, dare I say snubs. You may have noticed, but it was chock full of winners and iconic players. They do often go hand in hand, but that doesn't mean that they were the only 10 great returning players out there. While I talked about Parvati and Suri and the Black Widow Brigade, it wouldn't feel right in my heart without including the third returning player of their holy trifecta, and that is the Amanda Kimmel from Survivor China, Survivor Micronesia, Fans vs. Favorites, and Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. But in this case, we are mostly talking about Micronesia. Because while Amanda was low-key an underrated strategist on China her first time out, it's gotta be said, the more that I've dug into the details of Micronesia, I have come away even more impressed with Amanda's return. Hearing about her romance turned blindside of Ozzy is wild. How she worked in tandem with Parvati the entire season. Then you throw Suri into the mix alongside Amanda's challenge hacks at the end to clutch her spot in the final tribal, and you have got a deadly dose of a great returning player. And with season 20, her second return, Russell Hance even went on to say the hero he feared the most wasn't JT or Tom or any of them. It was Amanda. The next member of the favorites team, Amanda from Survivor China. I have a really good idea. Get rid of James tonight. He doesn't expect it right now. In the past six months, I've been living in the jungle for 78 days, you know? So I don't think there's much in my life that I can't handle after two survivors in a row. Which leads me to the second greatest returning player in this video in my top 20, and it's the name I just dropped. It's Russell Hans. And I mean... What do I really need to say to convince you he's not worthy of being here? His performance in Samoa is one for the ages, but this second go around on Heroes vs. Villains turns it up to an 11. Going into the game down in numbers as an unknown, and then being gutsy enough to challenge Boston Rob when you're already in the minority? The idol finds, the plays, the flipping of the numbers from underdog to overdog to dog chill, you're burning your jury votes. There's a lot to say about Russell, and there's a lot that has been said about Russell and his return turn on season 20, and after everything that he brought to the season, and everything he left us with in the wake of his second loss, kind of like Amanda, he is for sure in the category of great returnees. I'm a villain. I think villains are smarter than heroes, because they don't mind stabbing somebody in the back to get where they want to get. It's a fact. It's a proven fact. Google it. You know, I said I would do it, and here I am. I've done it again. You say you can do it, but... It's a lot harder than you really think. And I've done it twice. But let's stick around with season 20 for a little longer. We ain't finished playing just yet. Because I want to mention one more returning player on the Villains Tribe, we got a lot of Villains cameos here, who doesn't always get their dues, but if one challenge had a different result, they very well could be the winner. I am talking about the original Black Widow of Survivor from season 2 and season 8, and now season 20, Jerry Manthe, the black hat of it all. Whereas Colby was the white hat who was a shadow of his former self, despite me laughing a lot at his shenanigans being a Superman in a fat suit, I couldn't really stop laughing with or at Colby, the treasure island of it all. It's why I didn't end up so disappointed with him in the end. But none of that can be applied to Jerry. Jerry took the game seriously and played so well from within the cracks of the villain's tribe. You might not realize it because the story didn't really focus on her a ton, but Jerry was a key figure in several moves. Boston Rob's alliance collapsing after she flipped. Candace and Danielle getting taken out with her vote. Jerry stood more than a decent chance at winning this season, and because all the focus was on Sandra, Parvati, and Russell, you may have missed that Jerry was the next biggest threat to win, and would have had one of the greatest three season arcs in all of Survivor. Heck, even though she loses, just just her reputation alone being what it became after season 20 is enough for me to warrant her being in this top 20. We respect the Manthe name in this household. I've been labeled things like she devil in a blue bikini, the wicked witch of the west, man-eater Manthe, that was my favorite one. <laughs> the original Black Widow still <laughs> owning her title. I even got a black hat for this season. Yeah, is there a little symbolism but her hat being black and mine being white? Crap! 
One more night. I was so sure I had this one. Speaking of icons, while we did see those giant face statues of Rob and Sandra on season 39, I gotta ask, when are we gonna get the probes cut with the digitally inserted faces of Coach and Ozzy on South Pacific? Yup. Two legendary returns for the price of one. Numbers four and five are indeed Coach and Ozzy from season 23 South Pacific for two vastly different reasons. Like they could not be further from each other on the spectrum. We've got Coach who evolved into his final form from the Slayer to the Dragon, the Mander to the Zard. He was the face of the strategic game all season and controlled his alliance with an iron grip. I mean, iron sharpens iron, right? While he didn't win, he did nearly win, and to see the guy he was on token chains with the feathers and the poems and the dragon stick, to see that guy go on to actually dominate five seasons later is not something I had on my bingo card. I wanted to change the game, and I nicknamed myself the Dragon Slayer. I got voted off. I kind of felt like a fool. The analogy, you look back to the ancient Chinese, the story goes that the dragon came into the fire and through that fire resurrecting from the ashes came this beautiful phoenix. And I want to see this final chapter have a happy ending. I want on that last day standing to have truly risen from the ashes and become the ultimate victor in this game. Contrast with Ozzy, who didn't dominate the same way as Coach, but did still command our attention and basically foil every player of the season from Redemption Island as he carved his own path to the final tribal. Winning duel after duel after duel after duel after duel, acting as a Trojan horse for the opposition. For revenge, basically. For being one challenge shy of winning the entire game. Let it be known, what Sophie pulled off was clutch, but let's not forget the effort Ozzy put in to get there. This was Ozzy in his truest nature, in the nature, fulfilling the dream he sought out all the way back in his first appearance. He wasn't a grand strategist then, and he's not a grand strategist now, but not everyone has to be. Greatness comes in many forms, and Ozzy would know it. There's more than one way to slice a coconut. I need redemption because I feel like I just haven't been able to lock my hands on the million dollars. I've almost been there a few times. I just haven't been able to finish. We have a chance beating you to duel. You have a chance. Everyone has a chance. He really doesn't stand a chance. I can't say that I won't miss this place, because I will. I really will miss Redemption. But I'm also so excited to get back in the game and get back to real life with possibly a million dollars. And after saying all those nice things about Ozzy, the sixth returning player on this list is none other than the man who didn't have a ton of great things to say about him. And that is John Cochran. Mind you, I am talking about Cochran on season 26 Karamoan, given his first time out was less than stellar. Cochran is essentially the super fan archetype in its truest form. He first played alongside coach and Ozzy and <laughs> was a train wreck. It was pretty, it was pretty bad, not gonna lie. But he was invited back a few seasons later on a half all-star season and proceeded to play what many define as a perfect game. He never received a vote against him and received every vote from the jury to win. Cochran's second time out was defined by his chameleon gameplay, blending in with everyone, laying low in the shadows, and striking when the time was right. He gave what I believe to be one of the best final tribal performances ever, and I believe has warmed up to the fan base a lot since his win, given his very self self-effacing and self-deprecating humor. And then he had the pleasure of going boating with Debbie on Game Changers, and I mean, greatest returning player cameos video when? Whenever things are looking good for me, I suddenly start expecting the worst and preparing myself for the worst. Am I gonna be able to get on to survive, which I've been dreaming of doing for half my life? No, I'm a loser. I'm never gonna want somebody like me. And I get on, I get to return as a favorite. I know I've done stuff, and I know I can express myself, but this doubt just creeps in. But when I'm not feeling confident in myself, it's hard to do. The battle for second place is a really heated one, and I can't wait to see what happens. It's so lonely at the top. <laughs> this is horrible stuff for me to be saying, but I, of course, lose. The winner of Survivor Fans vs. Favorites, Cochran! Keeping up with the returning player winners, I would be remiss to leave out this next one. The only one I haven't actually mentioned yet, and that is Tyson from season 27, Blood vs. Water. Now, I'm a big Tyson fan, and it was tough for me to not include him in the first video, but, I mean... 
That was a stacked video as is. Tyson returned for his third time after somewhat letting himself down in token chains and heroes versus villains, getting blindsided both times, first by JT and Steven, and the second by himself. His legacy was looking pretty rough, but then here he comes one more time, and what do we get? We get Tyson 3.0, who's at first chilling like a coconut bandit, then hurts his shoulder, then snipes the Buskowskis brothers and Tina, and then controls the entire game all the way to the end. Performance alone, Tyson's a strong winner. Never mind he was competing against a cast of half attorneys. He was against a big brother winner, he was against two other survivor winners, and he was against an honorable mention on this top 20 list with Laura Moret, one of the physically strongest challenge beasts in all of Survivor. Check my female challenge beast video. Laura is a unit, and I almost included her in this top 20. Tyson retained his snark, but was smarter about it. And for that and more, all I gotta say, Tyson, how you like them rocks? We it was to rustle feathers. Up. It was to rile your ruffle, about ruffle that. Ruffle feathers. You said rustle feathers. There were so many moments along the way where I thought, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna get to day 39. And now I have to focus on winning a million dollars. Speaking of rock draws, let's talk about Spencer from season 31, Cambodia. I mean, he did technically go to rocks at the Kagyan auction, just work with me here. Spencer put up a strong showing on his return, only a year after his final four finish on his first try. He was a robot who was seeking a heart. Could he find it on the Cambodian sands? Yes and no. Spencer made a lot of smart tactical moves on his return appearance that netted him a runner-up position behind Jeremy, a player in the first video. His strategic game was acute, but his social finesse left something to be desired. And then you combine that with his season-long story of trying to be this better person and not just a robot who viewed the cast as chess pieces, and I think he's an interesting case study on two opposing narratives existing at the same time. I was pretty captivated by the concept of it. He grew a heart but he didn't get a jury vote. But at the same time, I still think he's worthy of a spot on this list. Last time I played Survivor, I was frankly cocky. Being more emotionally aware, I think I'm in a better place in life than I've ever been to play and win this game. I didn't come here to get to the final three. I am here to make my second chance count and to prove that the change that I've gone through deserves the win of Survivor. So we've got two spots left, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm at a crossroads with number nine. I'm currently looking at Game Changers, and I'm specifically looking at both Ty and Brad, the fourth placer and the runner up. On one hand, we have Ty, who found a billion idols and held two of them until the final six, he caused an Armageddon. And while he didn't perform better than his first time out, getting fourth instead of third, I do think that his win equity was a lot higher on this season than on Ko Rong. He's kind of like the reverse Spencer, finishing just shy of what could have been a win, having learned a little more as a returning player. I've always been fond of Ty and enjoyed him, even though he was at times a little confused on what to do, and that kind of cost him toward the end. On the flip side, we have Brad. Brad very much turned his game around on his return appearance. Nearly winning the season after clutching five immunity challenge wins and doing a great job at that split tribal with JT in the pre-merge to sink JT's game. Whatever connection Brad had with JT really gave Brad a boost when Malcolm was taken out. Brad was kind of a nobody after his first appearance, he then failed to get voted back by the fans for Cambodia, and I can't say the fanfare for him was remarkably high going into Game Changers. But all of that led to him possibly being in my top 20, because the bar was low and he very, very much went above and beyond to prove that he had the chops to play. He did fumble the ball at the end, and it cost him, underestimating Sarah. But like I've said, not every returnee's a winner. I might split the difference and make this a top 21 with both men in it, but I will say if you held your engagement ring to my head. Thank you for that, Sarah. I initially considered Brad over Ty, but as far as I'm concerned, they're both worth a mention. I'm not afraid to make big move, because you want to make big move, you got to take the ball and own it. I did a lot. I don't make a couple big moves socially. People liked me. I mean, this is a really tough game, but I bounce back and, and I just grow stronger. Playing Survivor, your guard is always up. And if you relax, if you nap on the job, you're going home. I've won five immunity challenges. I put myself here. I wasn't drug here. I did it on my own, and I brought the people that I wanted with me here. But let's end with one final bout of greatness. Last on this list, my winner pick when I first heard about the cast all the way back in 2019. Give it up for the runner-up 
of season 40 Winners at War, it's Natalie Anderson. And yeah, she was the first boot. If nothing else, Natalie is here to represent every first boot in Survivor. Francesca, you're welcome. Even a first boot can be great. As loath as I am to admit, the Edge of Extinction was a part of the game that season, and that meant Natalie could both be voted out first and come back on day 35 to potentially win it all. And she almost did. If she sends herself to fire against Tony and beats him, there's a chance it happens. And I can't just ignore that. I, I can't just pretend the Edge didn't exist. The game had this wacky expansion pack built into it, and Natalie played the hell out of it for all those days that she was there on that cove, staring into the ocean or carrying logs up that cliffside. She absolutely made the most of her return and nearly became the next two-time winner. And if you're on a season with the Edge, I'm not gonna say you should just roll over and die. Play your heart out, play to win, and let the chips fall where they may. Natalie did, in spite of being the first boot, and she almost won against the most stacked cast we have ever seen. I've been grinding slowly and quietly for so long, but all this hard work is worth it. It's on one day's work. This is keeping my head in the game, never giving up here, and fighting for everything I have. She's got it! Even though I have a very non-traditional path to the final three, I took the hand I was dealt and said, you know what, I'm gonna play the best damn extinction game I can. And that's it. Those are my top 10 greatest returning players in Survivor 2.0. Yeah, it's the second half of my top 20. We're dropping the dot. Regardless, let me know of any other great returning players who I may not have mentioned. There's definitely a lot more out there. Another thank you to my patrons for returning again and again and again. Greatness knows no bounds. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to not just pick up the ball, but dunk the ball on your returning appearance on your way out. And I will see you in the next one. Once I maybe consider making a video on the top 10 most average returning players. What can I say? They left me very whelmed. As for Haley, should she not stay firm with us, she's gonna be public enemy number one. I don't know. I mean, that's not a good speech to like groom me in. Kinda sounds like they don't need you, Haley. We need you and want you. You know where you stand with us, Haley. Yeah, on the outside right, where they put you. I think this is a stupid time in the game to be thinking about anything except physical threats. Are they going me? I'm trying to change everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm the one who's speechless. Time to vote. Ailey, you're up. I didn't consent. You're not ready. Apparently, we can vote. We can vote. Yeah, we can vote. All right. Let's vote. You may regret it, but I'll go. Fourth person voted out of Survivor Game Changes. Malcolm, that's three. That's enough. You need to bring me your torch. I'm gonna vomit. JT's not getting a Christmas card. Stupid kid couldn't keep his mouth shut.